So the next one is course code. So if you look at course code, there's a foreign key that comes from the course table. In the course table, you have to set this course code as an auto number. So in that case, the date type is going to be number. There are two ways you can do this thing. If your course code is a number in the course table, you can simply state it in the student table as a number and you can manually enter the data into the table. Or else, what you can do is, you can simply change this data type into text and simply mention here, select from course table. That means you're going to create a drop down menu to select the courses co from course table rather than enter it manually. For example, it's going to look like this. For example, it's going to look like this. So you can select the course code for the student table by from your course table. So let's see student name. Suppose in your student name, you can enter uh, more than um, two names, maybe your um, first name, um, the middle name, or first name and the surname or something like that. So what you can do is, you can set the length of that field into 20 characters, and then you can say, you can set a validation rule um, saying that it accept on the letters and the spaces so if you if you are entering the first name and the last name so you enter the first name and there's going to be a space in between and then again your last name but the name contains onto the text sort of values so simply you can write like this in the field properties length 20 and accept letters and spaces only and you can set a validation rule like this is null or not like this so it simply says it accept a to z or the spaces so let me show this one in access database so you have to uh, select your student name and go down here so in this uh, validation rule you copy and paste this particular validation rule and the field size you can change this one into 20 so then if you go to student name and if you can enter um, Sam uh, Babu right you can enter something like that but if you try to enter uh, numbers it won't allow you to enter it it gives you an error message so likewise it restricts the data that you've been entered into the field now let's look at title what are the different titles a person can have like Mr. Mrs. Uh, Master, Doctor, something like that. So under field properties, we can simply say look up table or drop down menu to select Mr. Mrs. Master and Doctor. So we can have a drop down menu to select a particular title from the database. Let me show it how this applies in the access database. So if you go back to the um, database in here you select title and from here you select your lookup wizard once the lookup wizard appeared you can simply say I will type in the values that I want and you can go on next and then simply you can say mr. mrs. Uh, master miss something like this you can finish it so your data type is going to be text though it is a combo box so if I go back to the data sheet view right 
in my title so I can select the values from the drop down it's going to appear like this way if you look at the gender field you know gender field shows you the sexuality category so it contains only the male or the female so we can simply say the field property you can apply a validation rule to enter m or f that means you're going to type m or f each time you can have a combo box as well but i'm going to show you how to apply a validation rule for m or f after you enter the validation rule you can simply set the validation text to say please enter m or f suppose if somebody enter a different letter then this particular error message shows to the user saying please enter m or f so that particular user knows that this particular field accept only f or m value let me show this one in access database so in gender what you have to do is you click on gender and go down and in validation rule you can simply say m or f so that's your validation rule in validation text you can simply enter your please enter m or f so if i go back to uh, my data sheet view right and go to title uh, sorry go to gender i can enter uh, because my sam babu is male student so i'm going to enter m so it accepts automatically suppose uh, the next one is my um, lena so is a she so it's going to be female but accidentally i enter k and if I try to go to the next column, it simply says, please enter F or M. That means it accepts only F or M. So I press OK and I can simply enter um, F in here. So the next one is date of birth. Normally, suppose I want to enter the format as date. So it's two um, letters and a slash and a month so it's going to be two digits again and a slash and a year so it's going to be four digits so i can simply say it's going to be two days dd mm year 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 something like this so i can create input mask to enter this kind of format so that means when I try to enter the data in this particular date of birth field, it gives me a format like this. Let me show this one in Access Database. So in my Access Database, I have to select date of birth and I have to go to Input Mask. And there, what I can do is, I can select the second short date. So it says date slash and month slash and the year so i can simply go to next next and finish it right so when i go to data sheet view when i try to enter the date of birth it automatically gives me the format to be entered so i'm going to say 25th of march 19 Nine, uh, 1992 even the second one I can enter like um, 30th of uh, what is this um, June 1990 something like that so if I look at the address normally address can contain numbers maybe different characters maybe letters and maybe spaces so it's better for me to set just the length for this particular address so i can simply say length 50. so in my database in the address i can simply say my field is going to be 50. so that's all i have to do
suppose in my postcode that I want to enter a format suppose most uh, most of the uh, postcodes comes as as two letters and two numbers and there's a space and there's going to be one letter and two numbers so my format's going to be two letters and then two numbers and there's going to be a space that's going to be one number and two letters let's see how to implement this one in access database in access database you need to select the postcode and you can have an input mask for that so you go to input mask right and you can see an input mask type postcode so it has two letters two numbers and there's a space and one letter and one number and two letters so you can select that one and you can simply say next next and simply says finish so when I want to enter the data if I go to my uh, postcode it will enter the data like two letters two numbers and one letter and two numbers if I try to enter the data uh, in a different format suppose if I want to enter the number first it won't allow me to enter the number first first I have to enter the letters and then the numbers then a letter and then the numbers so the input mask enables you to enter the data in the standard format the last one is telephone number so in telephone number you know there's going to be kind of 11 digits or sometimes if you want to enter an international number it's going to different digits so we are not going to set a standard length size length size for the telephone number we can roughly say the particular telephone number field is going to accept only the numbers between 0 to 9 you can simply say accept digit 0 to 9 only validation so it's going to be 0 to 9 so if you enter anything else it just simply gives you an error message saying accept numbers only so let's see how we are going to implement this one in access database so if you go to telephone number and here a validation rule you can simply write like this is now or not like 0 to 9 so this particular field accept only 0 to 9 digits and simply um, in here you can say um, accept uh, numbers only right and you can go to the data sheet view and uh, simply go to the uh, number field so simply you can go to the number field and try to enter the number and if I were to enter uh, letters after I enter it if I try to go to the next one it simply says accept numbers only so it won't allow me to enter the numbers so I have completed my student table so I entered all the column names and the descriptions and the data types and the field properties and key types and related tables so my final table is going to look like this so what you have to do now is you have to go back to your ER diagram so I've just done it for the student table and what you have to do is you have to do for the course table a separate one unit to the student table a separate one unit table a separate one and tutor table a separate one 